Our best result was this EIF 4G protein related to an initiation factor complex that is actually known to bind Argonaut to control transcription initiation in Giardia. I include other results for comparison, which are certainly not going to perform the desired function, because these are membrane proteins not uh, alive in the cytoplasm or nucleus. These have only slightly higher E values. All of this points to our results being quite weak. I also tried searching for several motifs known to exist in Argonaut proteins, and similarly got results mostly on uh, membrane proteins with a very high expectation value. It is still possible that the necessary proteins could be recruited from the host, or that an unknown protein with a unique method of action exists in plasmodium. As an aside, note that the protein homologs of the export factors for microRNA and other small RNA are mostly available in plasmodium. These are exportin 1, exportin 5, and exportin T, in addition to RAN GTP. These factors are required to transport microRNAs from nucleus to cytoplasm for maturation of the microRNAs and further processing to mediate double-stranded RNA cleavage. Although the protein search results are rather weak, we are devising some wet lab strategy to further explore the possibility of finding the core protein components. Out of over 3,000 double-stranded RNA binding motifs in PFAM, our best result had a 1 in 50 chance of being found as noise. Again, if we are pursuing an absolutely minimalist pathway, necessary proteins could hypothetically be recruited from the host. The following experiments were devised by Kosick, and I will read to you exactly the descriptions he gave me of them. To see if the plasmodium cell extract has the required activity for double-stranded RNA processing, we will synthesize and refold the promising snow RNA candidates from our bioinformatics search, mix it with plasmodium lysate, and then look for the smaller RNA or secondary processing products on polyacrylamide gels. Also, in parallel, we will use total RNA from plasmodium cells and size fractionate them for small RNAs of less than 40 nucleotides. Isolated small RNAs will be cloned using tags that are characteristic of RNAi processing product and a library of clones with unique sequences ranging in sizes from between 20 and 34 nucleotides will be created and analyzed to see if any of them matches our hits from bioinformatics searches. Next, since the export factors of microRNA processing pathways are present in plasmodium, we will generate antibodies against them and then fish out the export complex from plasmodium cell lysates with that antibody. Then we will isolate small RNAs from that complex to perform high-throughput, deep sequencing of RNAs which we can match with our hits. Similarly, we can see if these RNAs are doing transcriptional silencing at the DNA level. The DNA methylation enzyme, methyltransferase, is a very conserved protein also found in plasmodium. We will generate an antibody against that plasmodium protein and use that antibody in chromatin immunoprecipitation assays followed by deep sequencing. This will allow us to see if the predicted target sites from our microRNA search has any methylation signatures. Finally, we are generating a lariat debranching enzyme knockout in plasmodium. If it is successful, then we can compare the snow RNA processing in normal versus DBR knockout lines to see if the DBR has any role in the processing of snow RNAs or any other small RNAs derived from introns. In conclusion, we have presented a hypothetical story of microRNA gene regulation in plasmodium that is quite different from what we're used to seeing. So far, however, we have no conclusive results as to whether this actually happens in plasmodium. I'd like to thank my advisor, Mike Whittem, and uh, chemist here at Mellon Institute, Kosick Chakrabarti, for his help in this work.